<laughs> it's you are a cookie cutter, you are a cookie cutter. Yeah. By the way, uh, for my clients and people that uh, I connect with and I, I have contact with, I have a, it's a brand new program that came out that is the best valuation and assessment tool on the market, period. And uh, so if, if you'd like that, connect with me, contact me, and I'll hook you up and you'll have more information at your fingertips than most realtors in the market. Now, what are some things that people can do, the average, you know, Joe, Bob, Mike, what are some things that they can do to their home to get a little bit more for their home? And of course, the first one I wanna to touch on is the swimming pool. We're sitting here by this beautiful swimming pool and a lot of people will come in and they'll say, oh, if I spend 50000 or $75,000 on like the most amazing swimming pool on the planet, that the value of my house is going to go up. Well, yeah, kind of. But it's kind of like going and buying a Ferrari and saying, well, you're going to get a Ferrari with the purchase of your house. Well, the new Ferrari is four hundred grand, but then when you get it, it's only worth two hundred grand. It's kind of the same thing at the swimming pool. I mean... Swimming pool, you're going to spend fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars on a good pool, and it may increase the value of your home fifteen to twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars because the comps in the area they've all got pools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really too. Um, so there's there's a lot of I've been to several different appointments with uh, people, and uh, they believe that the property their value was increased by they they did. $200,000 in remodels and put in a pool and they believe that that increased the value of their home by $200,000. Well, that's called it, pride equity and pride equity doesn't work, unfortunately. It, yeah, it's just not true. Yeah, it, it doesn't work. For instance, if you're in a in an upper end or a luxury home, a pool is almost expected. And Correct. unless there there are some people that just don't want a pool and there there are those clients out there. But for the most part, the majority of people expect a pool in an upper end home. Correct. And if it doesn't have a pool, they're thinking, oh, how much is it going to cost for me to put it in? Fifty, sixty thousand dollars And then they put A hundred, really. For, for a luxury one. one, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and realistically speaking, yeah, I've seen some $60,000 pools. They're nice, but I mean, when you're getting into a higher end home, you got to get a bigger pool. You have this little tiny, it looks like a hot tub next to the giant house. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and we've seen that. And that's another point. Those those uh, those <laughs> pond soaking pond uh -huh, pool things. Uh -huh. Never ever ever never do that. <laughs> it is uh, there are And there's some cool pools out there. I've seen some pools that have they're like beaches. Yeah. They're sand when you walk into yeah. them and everything. There's some really cool pools out there. You're gonna spend some money. But again, let's say that you put in a, just a traditional pool, and we're we're just carrying a conversation on pools now. But I actually have a guy. If you need a pool, I've got a really good pool guy. Anyway. Um, if you're putting in just a cookie cutter pool, don't expect the value of your house to go. But if you go and you do like an infinity pool or one with the sandy beach walk in and the palm trees around it and rocks and waterfalls and all that stuff, and all the other houses in that neighborhood don't have that, you may get quite a bit more for that house. Sure. But again, you're not going to get what you paid for. What are some other things? I've heard painting the front door red is... A quick and simple way, you spend 10, 20 bucks on paint and you get quite a bit more for that house because it's got curb appeal. Yeah, if, if your CCNRs, if you're in an association and your CCNRs allow that is one thing that you have to check. But uh, yeah, I, I had, I lived in uh, Gold River, a mm -hmm. popular community, great community. And uh, I wanted to paint my door black because my house was gray and mm -hmm. I just thought it would mm -hmm. really pop. And th that was against their CCNR. So, so you know, what I did was I painted my door black. <laughs> he did it anyway. <laughs> back to the rebel. <laughs> and, and, you know, they wrote me letters and, you know, got in a tiff about it. But <laughs> I just laughed. Um, He's like, screw it. But, but then there was more in the neighborhood after I did it. <laughs> I heard, um, okay, for the kitchen. Kitchen is, is, in my opinion, the most important uh, room Dude. in the home. Um, second, of course, is going to be bathrooms. Um, if you have Again, nasty geez. bathrooms, that house is not going to do well, um, at least for at least in, in terms of uh, getting multiple offers over and over and over for higher than asking. Um, but kitchen's really, really important. I've heard something as simple as John Tesh even mentioned it. Um, 
let's say you've got a little bit older home. Let's say the home was built in the 80s or 90s and uh, all the appliances back then were all black faced or white faced appliances. Um, by putting even one stainless appliance increases the value of that kitchen in entirely. Yeah. Um, redoing your kitchen cupboards, not with Ikea, but having good quality kitchen cupboards put in also increases the value of that kitchen. But again, it's not gonna be dollar for dollar. No. But then the other piece of it though is it could be dollar for dollar because of the crazy market that we're in. That's right. You're, you're you're right on all cylinders. It could be dollar for dollar if it's done well. Yeah. If it's done poorly, like for instance, painting cabinets. Please never paint your cabinets unless <laughs> you have a guy that, even if the painter says, hey, I can do cabinets, I'm really good. Don't, don't believe it unless you have seen evidence of him doing it well. Because I have seen so many uh, terrible jobs, especially painting oak, which is common because yeah, yeah. if your house was built in the 80s Correct. or early 90s, they were 90s, all the same kitchen. They're all oak, yeah, honey oak. And uh, painting those cabinets is really difficult because they have it has very deep grain and it look they look they look terrible. <laughs> I do have a client that just she did it herself. Have it come out. Chalk paint. She used chalk paint. How was it? They're awesome. <laughs> They're the best job I've seen. <laughs> I was, I was shocked because I knew there was oak in that neighborhood, uh -huh. and I expected oak. And I'm like, "Who did your cabinets?" She's like, "I did." She said, "It was like." <laughs> she was no, she's not real flamboyant, but she said, "Oh, I did it," and I'm like, "Wow, that is really good." <laughs> and she she did it right. She she filled it, did a couple of coats. Uh, did a, uh, the right primer on it, mm -hmm. and then, uh, yeah, they came out fantastic. <laughs> so but funny. I've seen guys that charge seven, eight, ten thousand dollars to paint kitchen cabinets, and within a year it's chipping off. And it's, who in the hell? Or they, or they paint right who over. Who in the, the hell pays seven thousand to paint kitchen cabinets? That's more than you can paint a high end car. I have. So <laughs> that had, doesn't even make sense. I have clients that were asking me, you know, about painting cabinets. I've got a guy here in town that will put in new cabinets, new granite, new everything in your kitchen for under ten thousand dollars in a in a good size kitchen. Good. Very interesting. Yeah, and the other estimates from uh, the competition uh, for this guy were coming in at forty thousand, thirty thousand, and the first time I, he bid me for a smaller job. Uh, the estimates were about thirty thousand dollars, and he did. He said, uh, forty-five hundred." <laughs> so, so what could you do? Let's let's start to transition towards a close. What could you do to help somebody increase the value of their home if they're thinking about selling? Okay, three things. The the potential buyer has to fall in love with the house three different times. Okay. First is when they see the house. Okay. So landscaping on the outside, it's easy, it's inexpensive, manicured, just it has to look great. And that goes for on the internet too, because a lot of the buyers right now, that's where they first shop. Correct. Correct. So, so you can't just make it look great when they visit. And hiring somebody that's gonna take quality photos, yes. gosh. Dude. I've seen so many bad photos lately. Horrible. You can take good photos with an iPhone. You just need to have an eye for it. Yeah. Or we film all of this stuff on iPhones. I mean, I've got a thousand of these videos, 700 hours of content. It's all filmed on a phone. But you have to have the eye for it. One of my pet peeves, and I used to just grill my agents about this, is that, you know, they say, here's the master bedroom. And it's a picture of the bed, you know, a big uh -huh. four poster bed. And that's the whole picture. I'm like, it's a bed. You're are you or, selling a bed or are you selling a room? Or here, here's the second bedroom. And all it is is the corner because they use a poor camera Correct. with a poor lens. Correct. And so poor pictures just kill you, kill you. Knock the price down, you know, by, by I don't know, 20%. Just off the top That's of a lot of money. It's a lot if they, if you can even sell it. Yeah. So so anyway, uh, so yeah, so how it looks at the curb, in the pictures and in person is really vital. 
That's number one. Number two is when they step in the house. How does it look then? Is it, wow, I want to see more of this house. And then the third is the backyard. Uh, it has to, again, the same as the front, it has to shine. It has to look usable. Even if you have a small yard, you have to make it look usable for what it is. Correct. So all those things are really important in the marketing uh, side of it. And then uh, what you can do is, do I need to replace the carpet? Well, if you have stains and you have tears and you have this, replace the carpet. Replace the carpet. That don't is a dollar for dollar. Don't even put carpet in there. Put some hardwood or something. Never, never in the family room though. Okay. Hard, hardwood in the family room is is uh, a lot of people like that warm fuzzy thing. Yeah, but they're... they can put a nice nice Venetian rug down. I mean, you put a nice thousand dollar rug down. That is way better than any carpet you could buy. I, I mm. see he, I... opinions. Yeah. Opinions. Yeah, well, I, I think that most people like warm fuzzy under their feet when they're watching TV with their family or with their loved ones or their friends. It's so funny that you say that. But now in the kitchen and the entry and other places. Are people putting carpet in their kitchen? No, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know what I'm I've seen them in no, the bathroom no, like that, in the 80s. It was a fad in the 80s <laughs> and I had one where oh, in Gold River. They, uh, they carpeted the master bathroom. And my first reaction was, that's disgusting. <laughs> I know, I mean, it's awful. What is in that carpet? I know. And uh, yeah, so carpeting the bathroom's <laughs> bad idea. Right over All right. right, hire a professional. I think that's the premise of this entire video. You need video, call me. You need to sell your house, call him. What's your number, brother? 916-834-9792. Nine seven nine two. Find me on LinkedIn. Find me on Facebook. All right, there you have it, folks. <laughs> nice little fun one here in the backyard, and we do apologize. You know, we're hanging out right off the golf course here by the pool. You're probably going to hear a little bit of wind noise in this video. We're just having a good time yeah, on a Monday. Lawnmower, lawnmower, there. airplanes, birds, people teeing off. You know what? That's what you get when you're just hanging out outside, having a good time. But thank you guys for watching. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>